Hello and welcome. Today we're working on time value of money problems. This video is using Excel. Next video we'll do the calculator, the TIBA2 Plus, using time value of money problems. My name is Jeff from Finally Learn. I help you finally learn financial literacy, including Excel. If this is helpful to you, then please consider subscribing and hit that thumbs up. So time value of money is an important concept in all of business. A dollar today is worth more than a dollar in the future. That's the basic concept. Why? Why is a dollar today worth more today than in the future? Well, one is inflation. Inflation means the dollar loses its value over each year. And so over time, then the dollar is worth less, or it takes more dollars to buy the same amount of goods and services. The other way to think about it is it takes more dollars to buy the same things in the future. The other reason why a dollar today is worth more is because of interest. You can take a dollar and invest it and, and earn interest. So, so therefore, you would have $100 and then you invest it and you have $110. Then that is time value of money. Now, there's four different ways to calculate the time value of money, and I'm ranked these from best to worst. The very best way is using an Excel or a, spre uh, a spreadsheet or Excel. And, you know, there's uh, numbers and there's Google Sheets, and so those are fine ways to calculate. But we're going to show you how to do it Microsoft Excel. The next way is using a financial calculator, or um, it could be an app on your mobile device like your phone. Now, the calculator that's the most popular is called the Texas Instruments, BA2+, Plus, and I recommend the professional model if you're going to get that. So, the TIBA2 Plus Professional is the number one financial calculator, and there's plenty of apps on your mobile device, on your cell phone, that will emulate that. The one I recommend is this one right here for iOS, for your iPhone or your iPad. It's called BA Finance Pro for iOS, and the developer is named Ernest Brock. Now, if you have an Android device, then you can search for BA2 Plus, and you'll find several options on Android that will emulate the calculator. So these are the best two ways, and these are the only two ways that I would recommend. You could, if you say, uh, I'm going to use the formulas, you can go back and, and find the formulas and, and build the calculations that way. That is time consuming and that's uh, too, too intensive. Most people don't do that. I guess part of that you could use a, a calculator uh, fa function on a website. And so there might be a website function um, that would calculate time value of money problems. But you don't really get to calculate it yourself. You just plug numbers in and just see what it gives you. The worst way is using interest tables, and this happens a lot in accounting books and sometimes a finance book, but generally in the accounting books, you buy a $200 book or a $300 book, and they assume you don't have a financial calculator or an app on your phone. Well, that is too simplistic, and spreadsheets kind of took over for interest tables, and so I don't really recommend interest tables at all. Now, there are Six different things to keep up with in a time value of money problem. One is just the setting, basically, and it's, it's called periods per year, uh, or it's the compounding frequency. So periods per year or compounding frequency. Anytime you have a problem, if it's one period per year, that's annual. If it's two periods a year, it's semi-annual. Four is quarterly, and 12 is monthly. Now, Compounding period, it seems like it could be any numbers, and it really could, theoretically, but really um, it, it's down to annual, which is one, semi-annual two, quarterly, or monthly. Now, two different ways to think about your interest rate. You can always do a periodic rate, and so you have a period per year is one, and then you adjust the interest rate. So a 12% monthly rate would just be 1% per month. Now this is the way Excel is kind of old, so Excel has to use a periodic rate, so we'll show you how to do that here in this uh, video. And if you have a calculator, I recommend using the annual rate, always think in terms of the annual rate, and set the periods per year to 1, to 2, to 4, or 12, depends on the problem. 
Now, we have five factors, five numbers we need to keep up with in any time value of money problem. And anytime you work a time value of money problem, you know four, and you have to figure out the fifth one. I'm going to show you how to calculate all five of these here in this video. Now, N is the number of periods, and it would be years, half years, quarters, or months. I slash Y generally is the annual interest rate. We think better in terms of annual interest rate. And so then we have to convert it to a periodic rate if we need that. PV stands for present value. That is a lump sum or a single amount at the beginning of a problem. In other words, it's not a stream of payments. The next one is a payment or an annuity, and that is the stream of equal payments. It could be a positive number or it could be a negative number. Depends on if it adds to the account or if we're paying off the account and we're, we're making that account go down. Then the last item is future value. FV is future value, a lump sum or a single amount at the end of a problem. Not a stream of payments, but just a lump sum at the end of the problem. Now, we're going to work with Excel, so let's think about how this works. Now, if you look at a financial calculator, I use kind of the, the naming system from the calculator. So on Excel, periods per year, there's not a periods per year function, so we don't have to worry about that on Excel. But if it has a number of periods, then you can't create a function in Excel with just one letter. So they called it NPER for number of periods. The I slash Y, the interest rate, they call the rate. PV, present value is still PV. Payments is PMT. Future value is future value, FV. Now, let's do the first one, simple little problem. We're going to solve for future value. I've got 10 problems, and let's run through them pretty quickly. Number one. You invest $3,000 a day in an account that grows at 8% for 10 years. What will, it be, what will it be worth at the end? Well, this is an annual problem, so I just set it up this way. I put periods per year, so it's one period per year. 10 years, we're talking about years here. So the number of periods is going to be 10 for years. The interest rate, the annual rate, is going to be 8%. Now you invest $3,000 a day. Now, one of the things that happens is we need to set up, uh, figure out, does this need to go in as a positive or a negative number? And I'll show you both and kind of the idea of both. So let's just put it in as a positive and we'll see how it works. Are there any payments that add or subtract th uh, from that account over those 10 years? Doesn't appear to be. It would say, we have to assume they would have to tell us. If not, then we put a zero. So we know the four things. What four things do we know? We know the first four things. We know the number of periods, the interest rate per year, the present value, and the payment is zero, but we know that. So we're going to calculate the future value. Now, present value and future value are opposites. They can never have the same sign. So if we enter this as a positive, then the answer comes out to be a negative. Now, we may be okay with this. We can kind of ignore the sign, but that's confusing when you first start learning time value of money. If you enter it as a negative, then the answer equals positive. We feel better about it. I'm going to show you the way to manage this uh, on the Excel function. So this is going to be future value. FV is our future value function. I'm going to search for future value, FV. So FV, we need the rate. Now we need this to be an, an periodic rate. So I'm going to get in the habit of doing 8 divided by 1. Well, 1 period per year it's going to be 8% is the annual rate, and 8% is the periodic rate. But I want you to kind of get in that habit of, of doing that. Set up the problem this way, and you can do this every time, and it'll be, you'll be consistent. The number of periods is going to be 10. The payment is going to be a zero. The present value is going to be 3,000. Now, the one thing we didn't talk about is type. And let's scroll down and look at the type. The type if the payment's at the beginning of the period, we put a 1. If we omit it or payment at the end of the period, we put a 0. There's no payments here, and so we can put 0. We assume, unless we're told otherwise, that payments always happen at the end of the period. So our answer comes out to be negative 6476 and 77 cents.
So we invest $3,000 today. It grows at 8% for 10 years. What's it worth at the end? It's worth a little less than $6,500. Now, we may not want that to be a negative number. That could be scary to people. So one way we can do this, let me show you two ways to do this. We can make the present value, we can go make the present value a negative here in our formula. And then your future value comes out to be a positive number. Or you could make the final answer, just put a negative in front of that entire formula. So negative future value and it becomes 6476 positive. So if you invest $3,000 today and it grows at 8% for 10 years, you've got $64.76. Now the next one is also a future value problem. Your account has $10,000 and you decide to add $500 per month for 20 years and the interest rate is 9%. Now, you have to ask yourself a question, is that 9% every month or is that 9% as an annual rate? Well. 9% per month would be an enormously high interest rate that we would not assume. We're going to assume that the annual rates are things like 5 or 7 or 10%, 12% maybe. We're not going to assume, you know, there's going to be 90% for the year or whatever. So this is an annual rate, and because we have monthly payments, we're going to convert this to a, a, a monthly problem. So the periods per year is going to be 12, so it's a monthly problem. And instead of just putting 20, it's 20 years, we need to think in terms of months. So we're going to take the, the 20, we're going to put 20 times the 12. So we're talking about 240 months. This is a problem that deals in months. The interest rate per year, I'm going to put 9%, and then when we enter that number, uh, I will convert it to a periodic rate that we need to do on Excel. Now, present value is going to be 10000 That's how much you started with. The payment is going to be 500 Now, the question is, do we need to add this 500 Does it increase the account? Are we adding that to the account? Or are we withdrawing 500 from the account every month? Well, we're adding it so they both need to be either positive or they both need to be negative. They need to be the same sign. Now, how do we manage this? Now, sometimes... If you want to think about it as cash outflow, I'm paying $10,000, that's negative. I'm paying $500 a month, that's negative. And so you can make both of these negative. And, and then your answer comes out to be future value is positive. We can manage this uh, within the problem. And let's just make it, let's enter this as positive and we'll have our future value come out to be positive. We know it's going to be negative. So let me show you the first step on this. The rate is going to be 9% divided by 12. So the periodic rate is less than 1% per month. The number of periods is 240. The payment is 500. The present value is 10,000. The payments happen at the end of the periods. We're going to put a zero. And our answer comes out to be 394,000. We don't want it to be negative, so I'll just put a, a negative in front of the future value, so it shows as a positive number. So Excel's happy, it puts in a present value and payment is positive, it returns a negative, and we just flip that sign, make it where it shows positive. So if you had $10,000 and you added $500 per month for 20 years, you're going to end up with $394,000. So that's why you invest. That's You need to know this, especially if you're young, you need to know, hey, You've got time. You can put aside a little bit of money every month. And when you get older, you have lots of money in that account. Now let's switch. Let's do present value. Present value is a lump sum today or at the beginning of the problem. Let's say you're going to receive $200,000 each year for 10 years. You're going to receive $200,000 starting today you can earn 6%. What is the annuity worth today? What is that stream of payments? Now, 200,000 times 10 is $2 million. Now, we can't just take 200,000 times 10 and say, well, it's worth $2 million today. It's not. It's spread out over 10 years, so it's going to be wor worth less than that total $2 million. Now, this is an annual interest rate problem. The number of periods is going to be 10. 
the interest, the annual interest is 6%. We know the payment is 200000 And we know the future value is zero. We're not getting a lump sum at the end. So what we have is we need to calculate the present value. So that function is called PV. Our rate is going to be 6%. The number of periods is going to be 10. The payment is going to be 200,000. The future value is going to be uh, zero. The type. Now, because our first payment is not at the end of the year, it's today, we're going to make sure we put this as beginning of the period. This is period. Um, the type is 1. So we hit OK. Now this comes out to be a negative. We can just put a negative in front of the present value formula. And if you have that stream of payments, 200000 each year for 10 years starting today, then it is worth about $1.5 million. All right, so in other words, you could sell this to somebody. If they discounted at 6%, you could sell that stream of payments and you'd have $1.5 million today. All right, number four, present value. One more calculation of present value. A $200,000 15-year bond pays semi-annual interest payments of $8,000. You own this bond, and it's going to pay $200,000 at the very end. It pays semi-annual interest payments of $8,000. So semi-annual means two periods per year. The bond is sold to yield 7.5%. What is the price or present value of the bond? The number of periods is going to be 15 years times 2. So that's 30 periods. The interest rate, the annual interest rate, is 7.5%. We're trying to solve for present value. Our payment is 8000 The bond pays at the very end a lump sum of 200000 So we're going to solve for present value. Now the payments happen at the end of the period, so we're going to calculate present value. The rate is going to be 7.5% divided by the 2. The number of periods is 30. The payment is 8,000 every six months. The future value is 200,000. The payments happen at the end of the period. So we're going to solve for the present value of this bond. It's 208,000. We'll just make it put a negative in front of the present value to show a positive number. So we have Payment is 8000 the future value is 200000 and it's worth today $208,914 and some pennies. So that's how you do the present value of the bond. Now, number five, we're going to solve two, pay two uh, problems for payment. So let's say you buy a car for $27,000, you finance it for five years, and you make monthly car payments. The interest rate is 6.2%. Is that the monthly rate or is that the annual rate? Well, that's the annual rate, and we're going to convert it to a monthly uh, periodic rate within Excel. So the periods per year is going to be 12. The number of periods is going to be 5 years times the 12, right? The interest rate per year is 6.2%. The present value on the car, we've, we've purchased the car for $27,000. And we want to pay it off to zero, right? So how much car payments do we need to make along the, along the way? Well, this is going to be a payment function, PMT. So PMT, we need the rate, 6.2% divided by 12, so it's about half percent per month. The number of periods is 60. The present value is 27,000. The future value is going to be zero. And the payments happen at the end of the period. So we need to make a payment every month of $524.50. Now, this is negative because it means we're going to have to pay. We've received 27,000 and we're paying out of our pocket 
$524. If you don't want that to show negative, then you can just put a negative in front of the payment, in front of the present value, uh, I'm sorry, the payment function, and you have $524.50. So your monthly payment is about $525 to pay off this loan of $27,000. Now, what's the total amount that you would pay? You would pay $524,000. I don't know why I keep saying $1,000, $524 times 60, and that's going to be $31,470. If you buy this car for $27,000 and you finance it over five years, you're paying a total of $31,470. So that's a lot of money over five years. That's $6,000 a year. Item six, suppose, let's think of it a different way. We're going to calculate the uh, payment. Suppose you want to have $1 million at age 70. You're age 25 right now, and you currently have $1,000 saved, and you think, hey, I'd love to have a $1 million. What does it take? You think you can earn 8%, and what's the monthly amount you can save to achieve your goal? Well, it's going to be an annual uh, I'm sorry, a, a monthly rate. We're, we're going to do monthly payments. So we need to put 12 periods per year. The annual interest is going to be 8%. The, I'm sorry, the uh, number of years is going to be, um, it's going to be the difference between 70 and 25. So I think that's 45. So we have 45 years. Make sure my math's right. 70 minus 25 is 45 times 12. Now, if you're a young person watching this, you have many years until you get to be age 65 or 70. So you've got time. You don't have to put a lot of money in every month, but you can put a little bit aside each month and invest it. And then that money will grow uh, to big, big numbers. And I hope you do. You need to know this when you're a young person. 8% is our annual rate. The present value, you've got $1,000 right now. And you're trying to figure out how much do I need to put in? Do I need to put in another thousand? Right? The future value you want is one million dollars. You want one million dollars, you have a thousand right now. So what kind of payment do you need to make every month? Well, the rate is going to be eight percent divided by twelve. You're making an eight percent annual divided by twelve, that's the periodic rate. The number of periods is 540. The present value is going to be 1,000. The future value. Now, we're going to run into a problem if we put them both in as positive. We're going to have an error. Uh, we're going to have a weird result, a negative number, something like this. So I need to put in, I'm going to put my present value in as negative. My future value in as positive. And so uh, the payments happen at the end of the period. So you need to set aside, and we'll make this where it, it um, does not show the negative anymore. So you need to set aside a payment of $182.73. If you set aside $183 and you got an 8% return, then at age 70 you have $1 million. You can adjust this. If you want to be age 60, you want to have 2 million or, or whatever, you can adjust this, but this is how you solve that kind of problem. All right, the fourth section we have here is we're going to solve for the interest rate, which is the rate function. And we'll show you how this works here with two more problems. Let's say you have an investment that's grown, um, your investment of 100,000 started at 100,000 has grown to 284,400 in 9 years. What is your annual rate of return? And this is called the compound annual growth rate or CAGR, C A G R. So the periods per year is going to be 1. The number of periods is 9. Your interest rate is what you're trying to solve. Your present value is going to be 100,000. Now we need to enter that as a negative in our formula. The payment, we put no payment in, and our future value is 284,400. 
So what kind of rate of return did we get? So here we're going to do rate. Same kind of thing. The number of periods is 9. The payment is 0. We had a present value. I need to enter the negative 100,000. The future value is the 284,000. And the payments happen at the end of the period. There's no early payments. We just assume end of the period, though. We can guess. Uh, we don't have to guess. But if you want to guess, you can. And we'll hit Done. So if our investment went from 100000 to 284400 in nine years, we have earned a 12.31% annual rate of return, or CAGR, compound annual growth rate. Now, if we go back and look at this problem, if we did not enter, if we entered the um, present value as a positive and the future value as a positive, we get an error called a uh, number error, and it doesn't have a way to calculate this. So you need to make one of them negative. It doesn't really matter which one. I'm going to make the present value negative to say I paid 100000 and I received 284 so that's 12.31%. Alright, number eight. We also need to calculate the rate. So the rate is your account started with a balance of 33000 and you made monthly investments. Alright, this is good. If you have an account, you need to make monthly investments. So the number of periods is going to be 30 years times 12. So 360 periods. You started out with a balance of 33,000. Your monthly investments were 500. And your future value is 922,000. What kind of rate of return did you end up getting? Well, rate function, the number of periods is going to be 360, the payment. Now, because the present value is going to be negative, the payment's going to be negative, they have to be the same sign. We paid out of our pocket both the 33000 and the 500 to receive the 922. So I'm going to make the payment a negative 500. We'll make the present value a negative 33000. The future value is a positive 922000 The payments happen at the end of the period, and we don't have to guess. So we end up with, this is 0.6%. Now, this is the periodic rate, and we need to then multiply that times the number of periods, which is 12 times 12, to convert that to an annual rate of 7.21. If you started with $33,000, you put in $500 each month, and you're at $922,000 30 years later, then you received an annual return of 7.21%. All right, the last section here, we're going to calculate the number of periods. We're going to solve for the number of periods. So here we have a credit card. Now, credit cards can be very expensive, so you need to know the math, how this works. A credit card has a $5,000 balance with interest rate of 18% annually, right? The minimum payment is $100. How many months to pay off the credit card if you make the payments of $100 only? So the periods per year is going to be 12. The number of periods we're going to solve for, and it's going to turn out to be months. The interest rate is going to be 18%. That's the annual rate divided by months will be the periodic rate. The present value is $5,000. We're going to make a $100 payment. Now, this needs to be a, a different sign, so we're going to make this negative $100. And our future value is going to be zero. Um, we're trying to pay this loan off. So how many months does it take? Well, it's going to take at least 50 months. So if you get an answer less than 50, you know that's wrong. So uh, 5,000 divided by 100, you know it's going to be at least 50, but interest will make it more months. So we're going to solve for the number of periods, NPER, number of periods, the rate um, we want is 18% divided by the 12. The payment is $100, we'll make that negative. Okay, it's already negative. I put that in the, um, the cell here, it's already negative. The present value is 5000 
the future value is going to be zero. The payments happen at the end of the period. So the number of payments that it takes is 93 months plus a little bit extra. Well, how many years is that? 93 divided by 12. We're talking about almost eight years. If you make the minimum payment, and when the minimum payment goes down to 80, you don't, you don't go down to 80, you stick at 100. If you make just $100 payments over the life of this loan, then you're taking almost eight years to pay this loan off. That's very expensive. 18% is very, very expensive. So you want to be very careful and not have a credit card balance. The last problem we have is, uh, number 10, you can invest $300 per month and you can earn 8.5%. Your goal is to have 200000 How many months will it take? You can put any number in here. You can say, I, I want to have a million dollars. If I save $350 per month, how many months does it take for I have a million dollars? Well, the periods per year is going to be 12. The interest rate per year is 8.5%. The present value is zero, looks like. Don't have a present value. We're going to make a payment of $350. And we want a goal of $200,000. So this is going to be the number of periods. The rate is going to be 8.5% divided by 12. We need to put always a periodic rate in Excel. The payment is going to be... Uh, did I put that in the wrong location? Yes. Sorry. So number of periods, we want the rate to be 8.5% divided by 12. The payment is going to be 350. And we need to make 350 uh, a negative number because we know it's coming out of our, our pocket, $350. The present value is zero. The future value is going to be positive 200000 The type is going to be zero, and we're going to solve. This is going to be 229 months. If we convert this to years, 229 divided by 12, it's going to take you about 19 years. If you invest $350,000 per month, you're going to have 200000 in about 19 months. So if you're 20, then when you're 39, you'd have 200000 If you're 30, then when you're 49, you would have 200000 If you invested three fifty per month and you got an 8.5% return. All right, so this is how you do all the different problems in Excel. We're going to do these same problems on the next video using the Texas Instruments BA2 Plus calculator. I'm going to use the app so I can show it on the screen. And so we'll see you on that next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing and hit the thumbs up. If this was helpful for you, hit that thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. Thanks.